This is for integrated three's essential skill logarithms. So on the screen, we've got some important properties of logarithms. One of the most important is the rewrite formula. You take whatever the base is, and that's the base of your exponent. And then notice how the A and the B are on the same side initially. When you go to rewrite it, the A is now with the C, and then the B is by itself. So rewriting from log form to exponent form and exponent form to log form is super important. And then we've got our laws of logs. When you are adding two logs with the same base, you can write it as a single log and multiply those values together. When you are subtracting two logs with the same base, you can write it as a single logarithm and divide those two numbers. And then any coefficient becomes an exponent of a logarithm. Then there's some basic facts at the bottom. You could always figure these out on your own if you needed to. You don't have to feel like you need to memorize them. One thing to be sure you never do is never take the log of a negative number and never try to take the log of zero. That is why the graphs of logarithms have an asymptote. So we're gonna start using these properties on the next page. Okay, so one of the first things you learned how to do was evaluate logarithms. These are things you should be able to do in your head. Um, in our note packet from last chapter, there were some exponents that you should be memorizing. You should be memorizing two through 10, squared and cubed. You should also have three to the fourth memorized, which is 81. And you should also have two all the way up to the power of six memorized for our next test. You will not have a calculator on this logarithm part of your test. So if you are asked to evaluate, some of you might be able to do these in your head and that's perfectly fine. These are just worth one point, right or wrong. But if I don't know what to do, I'm gonna put in equals X and then I'm gonna work on rewriting it as an exponential. This really means two to what power equals 16. And that's one of those laws, exponents that you guys need to memorize. Two to the fourth, two times two times two times two gives me 16, so X would equal four. So why don't you try a few of these, pause the video, and do as many of them as you can before I go over the answers. So if I was rewriting number two, three to what power equals 27? You should know that three cubed equals 27. Number three, five to what power equals one over 25? Now to get a fraction using an exponent, your exponent needs to be negative. And then in order to get 25, five squared is 25, so the answer is negative two. Negative exponents give you fractions. 36 to what power equals six? Now to make your numbers smaller, you're probably thinking, well, I just want to square root 36. If I square root 36, that'll give me an answer of six. Well, a square root as a power is a one-half power. A cube root would be a one-third power, etc. Two to what power? equals one over eight. So here's another one where I need to get a fraction. Using exponents to get a fraction, the exponent needs to be negative. And then two to what power makes eight? Cubed. So the answer is negative three. 125 to what power? Equals five. You should know that five cubed makes 125. So if I'm trying to make it smaller, I'm gonna use one third. The cube root of 125 is 5. Okay, one of the next things we learned was how to use those laws of logs to condense down into a single logarithm problem. So notice on all of these, the bases are the same. You cannot condense unless the bases are the same, but these all have the same bases. Each problem has the same base. So whenever I see plus, I'm going to multiply. Whenever I see minus, I'm going to divide. And whenever I see a leading coefficient, I'm going to make it a power. So always look for leading coefficients first. Number one doesn't have any leading coefficients. So I can jump right into log two of, the plus are gonna be multiplied together. So I've got four times x, which is gonna give me four x. It stays on top. The minus are gonna go to the bottom because it's division. So over seven. Anything that was minus ends up on the bottom.
And this is now condensed into a single logarithm. Number two has a coefficient, so you do that first. Coefficients become powers, so this is now log 5 of 16. Then same rules apply. If it's positive, it stays on top of the fraction. If it's minus, it goes to the bottom of the fraction, because minus means divide. So log 5, don't forget the log 5. We're condensing to a single logarithm of 16 on top and 7 on the bottom. Minus on the bottom, plus on top. So pause the video and see if you can do the last two. Oh, I numbered these wrong. This should be number 4. So there's an exponent, a coefficient in number three, one half. So this was talked about on the previous slide. 49 to the one half power is really the square root of 49. Square root of 49 is seven. That's the only one with a coefficient. Then all the ones that are positive are gonna be multiplied together on top all the ones that are negative, they're also going to be multiplied together, but they're going to go to the bottom. Do not forget the log base 3. 7 times 5 over 2 times 2. The negatives on the bottom, the positives stay on top. Condensed into a single logarithm. Coefficients in number used the wrong color, sorry. Coefficients in number four become a power, so y cubed becomes a power, so z squared. Positive ones end up on top. Negative ones end up on the bottom. A single log of x over, and when we multiply variables, we just write them next to each other y cubed z squared. Okay, so condensing is important. It'll be on its test as its own little problems, and then it's super important in solving, which is on the next slide. So solving log problems. First thing you should notice in number one is that there's two logs on one side. Anytime there's two or more logs on one side, you need to condense it. That's why we learned condensing. So, exponent, two cubed, two times two times two is eight. Then I still have two logarithms on the left. Plus means they're gonna be multiplied together. Write it as a single logarithm, eight times four. Then if I look at this problem and just think about it for a second, log of 32 has to equal log of x. So you can kind of imagine the logs disappearing. That x has to equal 32 in order for that statement to be true. Don't forget to solve this. I get so many students who just stop at log 32 equals log x. Don't forget to tell me x equals 32. Okay, same idea on number two. We want to condense the two logarithms together. Minus this time, remember minus is divide the top number over the bottom, or the positive number on top and the negative number on the bottom. Now I've got a log on one side and a number on the other. So I can't solve this, or it's not as easy to solve in log form, so I'm gonna rewrite it in exponential form kind of like we did on the first page. Two to the fourth has to equal x over three. Two to the fourth is 16. That's one of the ones you need to memorize. And to solve for x, I'll just multiply both sides by three. So x ends up equaling 48. Why don't you take a second and try the other two? Remember, if you can't solve it in log form, why don't you work on rewriting it as an exponent problem? Okay, so so far all I've done is change them all to exponent problems. x cubed equals 125. That's one of the powers you're supposed to have memorized. 5 cubed equals 125, so x equals 5. 
On number four, three squared equals x plus seven. So nine equals x plus seven minus the seven, x must equal two. Okay, here's about five more. Why don't you see how many of these you know how to do on your own? Okay, so let's work through these. Two logs, you need to deal with the exponent first. Three squared is nine. Condense into a single logarithm. Positive on top. Negative on the bottom. Can't solve it as a logarithm, so I'm going to rewrite it as an exponent. 5 squared has to equal 9 over x. So 5 squared is 25. One way to solve this might be to put this over 1 and cross multiply. 25x equals 9. And don't be surprised if you get fractions on test day. Just leave it as a fraction. Divide both sides by 25, and it's 9 over 25. Okay, number six, we haven't done one like this together in the video yet. You've done a lot with your teacher, though. You'll notice x is in the air. That's a key that I'm probably going to use a logarithm to solve this. So before I do, I need to get that whole piece alone. That's a little dark. So I need to get 3 to the x minus 1 alone. You cannot multiply the 2 and the 3. You can't multiply something that has an exponent with something that doesn't. So start getting the highlighted part alone. So add the 4. Add 4 and I get 14. Then since I can't multiply, I'm going to divide by 2. Now, x is in the air. I can't think of a number of times to multiply 3 by itself to get 7. That's not going to work out nicely. So I'm going to take the log of both sides. So I'm just going to take the log of both sides. Taking the log of both sides allows me to move the exponent in front to the ground. So I use parentheses around my exponent. So then since this is now times log 3, to get the x minus 1 alone, I'll divide by log 3. Just as a heads up, they never reduce. x minus 1 is going to equal log 7 divided by log 3. The 7 and the 3 never reduce. The logs never cross out. It's just going to look like log 7 over log 3. And then if I want to get x alone, my last step is to add 1. So x is going to be, I kind of ran out of room, sorry, log 7 divided by log 3 plus 1. You can't actually add the 1, so you just put it at the end of your equation. Now that you've seen that one, why don't you try number 7? Pause the video and try number 7 on your own. Okay, take a look at my work for number 7. First you add 3 to the other side, then you divide that 5 to the other side, then you take the log of both sides, which allows you to move the exponent in front to the ground. Now it's x minus 2 times log 7, so divide both sides by log 7. And then to get x alone, opposite of minus 2 is add 2. Number 8, rewrite it as an exponent. 3 to the 1 7th equals x. You'll notice x is already by itself, but what we really want to know is that you understand what a 1 7th power is. So what we're looking for is 7th root of 3. A fraction as a power is a root. So notice 7 is that number, 7 is the little number on the root. And that's the answer. Number 9, get the log alone, minus 1. See if you can finish this one. I'm running out of space, and I think we've done enough of these. See if you can finish this one, and I'm just going to show the answer. Pause it for a second. Minus the one you get to, 4 squared is 16, add 2 and you get 18. So that was a lot of different types of log equations that we practiced there. Lastly, graphing. So you've been experimenting and discovering lots of properties about logs the past two chapters. One of the things you should know is that the locator point of a logarithm with no transformations is at 1, 0. 
and the asymptote is at x equals zero. So to get credit, you need to make sure you include the locator point and the asymptote in your graph. So we're just gonna use what we know about transformations to graph these. So for number one, and you should expect to have to write the transformations on test day, when I see plus two in parentheses, I know that that's actually gonna move it left two. And this is from first semester. Opposite of the plus two gives me left two. And when I see a plus one at the end, sorry, it's a minus one. I know that's going to move it down one. So my graph is going to go left two down one. So you're going to put your pencil, I can't do a cursor on this very easily, but you're going to put your pencil at the locator point one zero. I'm going to draw it for a second and then I'll erase it. And then you're going to move your pencil, so my pencil's at the red dot, you're going to move your pencil left two and down one. So left two, down one. Now my locator point is here. Once I know my locator point, in integrated three at least, I know my asymptote is always one unit to the left. So my asymptote is one to the left of my locator point. Then we're just doing sketches this year. So you will make it hug the dotted line going down and logarithms really slowly increase to the right. See if you can do number two. Okay, so hopefully you know that it's moving the log, log excuse me, the log graph three to the right and up two. So with my pencil at one zero, the locator point, I'm gonna go three to the right and up two. And this is my new locator point. In integrated three, the asymptote is always one unit to the left. Don't forget to draw the asymptote. And log graphs hug the asymptote going down and really slowly increase. Okay, this should cover most of what you need to do in your logarithm essential skill.